Before Long John Silver, before Captain Jack Sparrow, and long before Captain Feathersword, one pirate ruled the seas with an iron hook and a black beard. <gasps> That's right, it's Blackbeard the Pirate. So he actually had a black beard. I mean, that's that's the key bit of info already. Ow. Yeah. I would have held that back. Spoilers. Hello and welcome. My name's Jess Perkins and I'm here with Dave Warnicky and Matt Stewart. Hello, Jess. Hello, Matt. Thanks so much for having us here today. Pleasure. Thank you for joining me in my personal library. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so much. You. Thank, Thank you so, so much. much. All right, well, that's that then. I'll read us your... Oh, okay. Yeah, if only there was a book full of something to actually read. <laughs> if only I had some kind of pre-prepared story for you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. Guess we'll all go home. Um, <laughs> okay. Today, I'm going to be talking about Blackbeard the Pirate. Oh. First of all, I did not know... I thought that was a myth. I thought that was a character. Yeah. From right. children's stories. Like, you did just name three characters from children's stories at the start of the show. Captain Feathersword is a character. I have said too much. Long John Silver, and then you've got what was the other one? Captain Jack Sparrow. Right. I think Jess has made up a name for, to have a third one. Yeah, yeah. I've never or heard three. Of one. I get it. Yeah, I just like little birds, so <laughs> I thought oh, I'm going to name a pirate Sparrow. That's cute, isn't it? That is cute. It's a little bird wearing a wearing oh. a captain's hat. Yeah, this is him. This I'm is... a pirate. Oh, look at me! I'm a pirate. Hello. Hello, I'm the pirate bird. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that fun we're having already? <laughs> I was wondering what that was for. I wonder where this goes from here, because that's a great start. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've locked the comedy down for yeah. the episode. So now if we get some facts in here, that'd be really great. We would have ticked all two boxes. Let's get into the info. So Blackbeard is one of the most famous pirates in history, but little is known about his early life. Or about whether he existed, of course. Yeah, well, I wasn't sure. Even his real name is actually uncertain. Uh, most people believe that his name was Edward Thatch, but even his surname is noted a bunch of different ways. Thatch. The most uh, most fun. common is either Thatch or Teach. Ah. Um, because a lot of the time, pirates habitually used fake names right. um, while they were pirating, so they didn't tarnish the family name. Those who can't pirate, teach. Exactly. That's what I've always said. Exactly. And those who can't teach, Thatch. Roofs. So. And those who can't do any of them, honestly, Darren, figure yourself out, yeah. mate. We've given you every opportunity. Totally. Your mother and I have worked tirelessly trying to get you a good education, trying to give you opportunities. And honestly, mate, you're just not giving it a go. We've told you, if you can't do anything else, make a web series. Just do that. How hard could it be? Sorry, what? have you changed the name Dave to Darren in that situation? <laughs> no. Could that, not help feel a little called out That was there. not a thinly veiled intervention. It's working. <laughs> <laughs> He's having a good hard look at himself right now. Look at him thinking about it. I'm trying to look at myself in the monitor. Yeah. If you see Dave wandering, like his eyes wandering, he's just looking at himself like a bird on a mirror. Oh, there I am. <laughs> oh, who's a pretty bird? Oh. Who's a pretty bird? Oh. Anyway, so pirates use fake names, so we may not ever get solid confirmation of what his name is. Um, so that's not why we're here today. To no, that. I definitely won't be giving you... Stone cold facts. <laughs> okay, you're talking about. Are you going to give us two options for every fact? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Everything will be allegedly. <laughs> he may have been a pirate or he may have been a, a diver. I don't know. Who knows? Could have been a beard model. <laughs> so it's believed that Blackbeard was born in Bristol in the UK around 1680 ish. Whoa. Again, not fully sure. His father, Edward Senior, um, was a mariner who moved the family to Jamaica. Um, which at the time was a British colony. And record keeping wasn't amazing in Kingston at the time. Um, so it's believed that Edward Jr, Blackbeard, married a woman and had a daughter named Elizabeth. And it's assumed that his wife died sometime before 1721, which is when they started keeping records in Kingston. Right. And no wife was recorded. So they're like, oh, she must have died sometime before that. That's quite, so that's a few years though, right? Mm. Has it, he pirated time. yet? Time. Yeah, time Yeah, it is. Time is a few years. Ugh. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah, I tell you what, it's hard <laughs> to keep up with it all. You know, it just keeps moving. Yeah. So it's quite possible as well that he served as a, as a privateer during Queen Anne's War, which was 1701 to 1714. So privateering is when governments, mostly in Europe, would hire private warships to further their own interests. So think of it like pirates for hire. Um, first, the governments would approach the owner of heavily armed vessels and give them legal permission to attack or plunder enemy nations. So they'd be like, here, 
You work for me. Go blow up those guys. Thank you. <laughs> I assume they talked like that. No, um, they, they talk like, yar. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, matey. Yeah, I was wondering who ya was. <laughs> ya over yarn, yarn dar. Ye. Yar. You got the crazy eyes down. I love it. Hey, <laughs> oh, God, you don't break that. Thank you, over yarn dar. <laughs> Me, matey, yar. Wow. Thank you. So yeah, if they are doing another one of those uh, pirate movies, mm. maybe uh, you could replace Jeffrey Rush. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> you know, <laughs> in the movie, in the movie, in the movie. No, no, no. I want to be an imposter. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, yeah, they, they um, believe that Blackbeard went into privateering and like many others, he turned to piracy sometime after the war ended. Ah, feels like a good stepping stone. Yeah, totally. It's like a, it's like a, a pirate apprenticeship. Yeah. You're, you're a were, privateer. You were a you pirate. But you're like too. a legit pirate. <laughs> Taking people's money is the thing to do. Looting, looting and, and polluting, polluting is the way. Hear what Captain Privateer, the pirate man, has to say. Keep it up. <laughs> Yar. <laughs> that, was a, that was a sexy part. <laughs> uh, I, I want to sub myself out. Yeah. But there's no one else here to sub in. Yeah, you can't just Dad, go. You, come you can't. You can't just go bit? quiet for a bit. Yeah. Oh, that's an option. Did you know that? Yeah. Just have a little time out. I'll just get through the first page. Maybe. Would be I'd good. love to hear more about it. Um, and then. You know, when we get to like page three, I'm having you a lot tap of swings. back in. Having a lot of swings. And you're hitting a, a lot, lot of misses. <laughs> I'm trying to be supportive here. Um, and we can fix this in the edit, right, Evan? Yeah, yeah. Evan can make you look good. Cut out all the shit I've said. Leave in the gold. So, yeah, edit me out. Please do go on. Thank you so much. I want to hear about how he went from a legal pirate to an Ill illegal pirate. To a pirate pirate. So, he joined the crew of Benjamin Hornigold. Oh. <laughs> I'm not going to talk, but How good they that? got my attention. <laughs> and at that, time, that. at that time, Hornigold <laughs> was the most feared pirate of the Caribbean. I mean, I love when people's names come from what they're <laughs> into. Thatcher, you're a Thatcher. Smith, you're a blacksmith. Hornigold, what's he doing with the gold? What's he doing? Jizzing on it. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's one thing about gold. It is a soft metal. <laughs> <laughs> can mould it into... You can mould it into any shape. <laughs> <laughs> any. <laughs> It also conducts heat really well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Friction. <laughs> it's a fraction too much friction. <laughs> Oops, start a little pube fire. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they called him pube fire. <laughs> yeah, red dick beard. <laughs> <laughs> their, um, their earliest uh, joint mission was in 1715 when a hurricane hit the coast of Florida and wrecked 11 ships, dumping a fleet's worth of treasure into the ocean. Like, all these ships have been ruined, but all of their good stuff is now just strewn everywhere. I said he could have been a diver. Could have been a diver. So it's washing up on the, sh on the shores of the coast and people are raiding the ship's wrecks and trying to recover whatever treasure they could. So the governor of Jamaica commissioned Thatch and Horny Gold to recover it for them. So he was like, go get that, that, that gold for me. That my gold. I'm a governor. You go get it for me. I'm paraphrasing. Hornigold <laughs> saw great potential in Thatch or Teach and soon promoted him to his own command. <laughs> Thatch or Teach or whatever your name is, just go and get <laughs> yeah, the gold. You there. You seem all right. You there, boy. <laughs> what day is it today? Gold day. <laughs> Treasure fetching day, sir. <laughs> so he gave him a ship, basically. So with Hornigold in command of one and Thatch in command of the other, they could capture or corner more victims. And from 1716 to 1717, they were greatly feared by local merchants and sailors. I realise now that's one year. Maybe not even. Um, for a while, will they their, were feared. Will their reign of terror ever finish? <laughs> it's been three yes. months now. <laughs> yes. Um, so they came across a man named Steed Bonnet in around 1717. You don't get that anymore. Steed Bonnet. Steed. Steed. Was he a horse? Steed's a great character too. So he was a wealthy gentleman from Barbados. Sorry, Matt. Am I saying that right? Uh, um, well, I... I think the one you, you mean is that it was Barbados. Mm, Barbados. Thank you. 
Um, he had a large estate, he had family money, and he decided that he would quite like to be a pirate captain. <laughs> So he ordered a ship to be built and he named it Revenge. Oh. <laughs> and he fitted out the boat and made it seem like he was going to head off and be a pirate hunter, you know, one of the good guys. He's like, I'm going to go catch all those, those naughty pirates. Don't you worry. So as soon as he set sail and he's out of sight of the port, he hoisted the black flag and starts looking for treasure. He's like, ah, I'm a little pirate. He's Started very playing cute. playing 80s punk. <laughs> He knew nothing about sailing or boats in general and was an all-round terrible captain. By the time the revenge made it to the port where Hornigold and Blackbeard, as he was now known, mostly because he had a long black beard. They were quite literal back then. Hornigold fucked gold. (laughs) Um, So they get to the... uh, Steed's ship arrives where Hornigold and Blackbeard are. Um, The ship was battered and in a really bad way because it turns out they had encountered a far superior pirate ship along their travels and Steed's 70 crew members basically begged Blackbeard to take over because they were so sick of working for such a terrible pirate captain. (laughs) But don't worry if you feel bad because the eccentric millionaire slash wannabe pirate stayed on board reading his books and walking around the deck in his dressing gown. (laughs) (laughs) That's the real captain. Yeah, that's the way to live. You want to be a silent partner in a mm. in a pirate ship, you know. None of the work, but all, some of the riches. Sounding a bit Hugh Hefnery. Yeah, I'm imagining him in like a smoking jacket. Yeah. Mm. Silky. Yeah. Silky number. Just reading books. Slightly parted. The other pirates like, well, oh, mate, captain. <laughs> can you put jocks on? I know you're just on holiday, but <laughs> we hey, can see your peg leg, mate. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> put it away. <laughs> they get two eye patches. <laughs> so they can't have to look at it Even anymore. The, the, the parrot's like, oh, oh, oh Jesus, <laughs> I can't look away. Long schlong silver. <laughs> I mean, good on him, but he demanded people call him. <laughs> Not true. <but laughs> yeah, tiny. Try well, to mate, we can literally <laughs> see it. <laughs> try to create a rep here. <laughs> Come on, help me out. So uh, Blackbeard's buddy Hornigold. Uh, made a point to only attack his old enemies. But the crew got sick of seeing all these British vessels filled with valuable cargo passing by and not being able to attack them. Because he was like, no, no, I'm only going after my enemies. <laughs> so at some point at the end of 1717, Hornigold was demoted. And not long after, he retired from the pirate life. He took one ship with him and he left Blackbeard with the Revenge, which was Steed Bonnet's ship. On November 17, 1717, he came across La Concorde, a large French slaving ship, and the two ships fired their cannons at each other. Pretty cool. Several of La Concorde's crew were killed and the captain was forced to surrender. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Death. (laughs) Blackbeard captured the ship, mounting 40 guns on it and renaming it Queen Anne's Revenge. He mounted 40 guns on it. Maybe he's the one who should be called Horny Cannon. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, leave the guns alone, alone, you pest. (laughs) Leave some for the rest of (laughs) it. 40 of them. Oh, my God. Hey, there's 50 men on this ship. He's like, nah, uh, uh, nah, I'm turn. the captain here. <laughs> I'm not getting your sloppy cannon seconds. Oh. Oh, That's why no. people were terrified of him. Yeah, he's a scary dude. He burned a lot of guns. So many guns. So the 17th of November, 1717 yeah. was wild as well. Mm. Just need to underline that. I know. It's a lot of 17s. Too many. I Imagine if November was actually called 17. <laughs> then it would have been the 17th of 17, 17, 17. Can you imagine? Crazy. I that can't would be imagine. <laughs> I'm struggling to. And i got a powerful brain. <laughs> <laughs> so powerful. Yes. Yes, you do. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Yes, you do have a powerful brain. Yes, yep. that's what I've been trying to tell you. <laughs> love the name Queen Anne's Revenge. Yeah. Don't that, know what it means, but I love it. That became his number one ship. He was like, get out of here, normal revenge. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Queen that's Anne's right. Revenge for me. Poor old revenge. And before long, he had a fleet of three ships and 150 pirates. Um, and this is where the name Blackbeard became feared on both sides of the Atlantic and throughout the Caribbean. By the way, let's take a moment as well to talk about his look and why he was so feared, right? So he was tall, broad-shouldered, and wore his hair long and had a long black beard. Sounds like a dreamboat. He does sound like a dreamboat. Nothing terrifying about that. Okay, how about this? I called him Captain Dreamy. (laughs) Well, how about this? During battle, he put lengths of a slow-burning fuse in his beard and in his hair so that it would kind of sputter and smoke. Wow, <laughs> that is hot, quite literally. <laughs> literally, yeah. It sounds like he's just going to burn his face. Yeah, it was supposed to give him a, a demonic look. 
And he dressed the part too. He wore either a fur cap or a wide hat, high leather boots and a long black coat. Oh, wow. He sounds like the undertaker of the wrestler. Yeah, or Neo from that, <laughs> yeah. that movie. A yeah. perfect combination yeah, of those two the, characters. The most terrifying man there is. <laughs> Neo. <laughs> he's a real cool guy. Yeah. He's, he's had a red pill. He doesn't believe in, you know, all that bullshit on the internet anymore or whatever that thing was about. What a, what a great message that film had. And he wrestles as well. Yeah, he does it all. On a pirate ship and he fucks guns. Yeah. <laughs> this guy does it all and he smokes out of his hair. <laughs> I would have called him gun fucker. <laughs> I would have called him smoky hair. Oh. That's just me. Um, he also wore a modified sling that had six pistols on it oh, into oh, combat. So he ready. just had this sling it like Rambo. Always ready to have <laughs> Pull a Pull them out, shoot them and then drop them. Yeah. Two more. I love that. He doesn't Very drop cool. them. Though, to be honest. Back he then it was them. like, bang, bang. Well, these are useless. <laughs> <laughs> bang, bang. That's still only six bullets. Yeah. But he used them well, all six bullets, every time. Do you think he would just throw away things he could fuck, though? Yeah. Come on, mate. Yeah, I'll right. see you later. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. He also had his own distinctive flag. That's the dream. Mm. So it featured a white horned skeleton on a black background, and the skeleton is holding a spear pointing at a red heart. There are also blood drops near the heart. And the skeleton is holding a glass, making a toast to the devil. <laughs> making, a, making some toast. And making that's all toast. being fired out of a cannon. <laughs> and, and if you zoom out even further, yeah. you can actually see there's uh, the devil's friend, uh, Jim, Jimmy. <laughs> that's if you zoom out. But if you zoom in, it's also a mosaic made up of mostly pictures of people doing this. Yeah. But they're skeleton, <laughs> they're skeleton bird fingers. So it's actually pretty full on. It's pretty scary. And then it's if you zoom way fight. out even further, it actually uh, is the number six repeated <laughs> two more times after that, which is actually the devilish number of all of them. Six, yeah. six. And then one more, sorry. <laughs> yeah, good, sorry. Yeah. But that description you read out does sound like someone is high trying to describe the flag that they want. Yeah. And then it's got this. And it's a toast and there's a love heart. Either high or a topper. <laughs> One of the two. Hard to know. A high toddler. A and high people, toddler. people see that fluttering in the breeze and they go, oh, oh, look at that horned skull clearly cheersing to the devil <laughs> with those little bits of red they drops blood. Of blood? Okay. I reckon they drops of blood. <laughs> we should be scared of this guy. Yeah. And yeah. They, they were he right seemed to be. <laughs> Captain Black Weird, more like it. <laughs> so despite being a scary looking guy, he actually preferred not to resort to violence unless absolutely necessary. <laughs> Please, can we just have a conversation? Okay. He'd just use fear and intimidation to get them to surrender without a fight. I mean, mm. he's a lover, not a fighter. Um, it was probably actually that he was smart uh, because if he violently attacked other ships, there'd be less loot for them and you'd mess up a perfectly good ship that you could add to your fleet. So why ruin a boat when I could just take the boat mm. and then I've got free boat, you know? Yeah. But there, are, there were exceptions to this rule as well. So some pirates had been hung in Boston uh, around this time. So any ship from Boston, he would fuck it up. Oh, oh no. What's he doing <laughs> to that ship? All right, guys, just get me nice and close behind this ship. <laughs> oh, All right, oh, no, please stop. Oh, <laughs> he, he did say he was tall. Is he tall enough to fuck a whole ship? I think anything's possible if you yeah. put your mind to it and your dick to it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what do you call the back of a boat? Stern. Just back that stern right That'll up right. real close. Little, Is that right? little bump and grind with the stern. <laughs> stern? I want to call it a butt. Yeah. The butt, the boat, boat butt. Boat butt. That's it's boat actually butt. real thick. <laughs> It's like it's a bubble it's like butt. Yeah. Both Bo's back then had real peachy <laughs> bubble butts, and he loved that. He loved he it. He loved that. Oh, they don't make boats like they used to. <laughs> no. well, they're so sleek these oh, days. So Get sweet, a bit of meat right? in your bones, boat. <laughs> this one's my hanged friends in Boston. <laughs> So in the late part of 1717 and early part of 1718, Blackbeard and Bonnet went south to raid Spanish ships off Mes Mexico and Central America. Mexico. Um, and they did really well in this region. And by the spring of 1718, he had several ships and close to 700 men when they arrived wow. in Nassau to divvy up their plunder. So are they stealing... The riches from the ship, but also basically enslaving their ships. You can't, yeah. It's, it's, over. it sort of seems like you'd have a battle between two ships, and whoever won is like my ship now. Oh, you're playing for pinks. Kind, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With pinks. That's one of the weirdest things I've pinks? ever seen come out of your face. Like someone like that shouldn't say playing for pinks. Well, I mean, he was referencing a musical, to be fair. <laughs> 
good point. You're the one who hates musicals. I was actually uh, referencing Fast and the Furious. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so he's got all these ships and, and heaps of crew members, and he'd gained a reputation and another nickname as well, the Great Devil. Ooh. Ooh, I like that. He realised that he could use this reputation for his own gain. So in April of 1718, he sailed north to Charleston, then a thriving English colony, and he set up right outside the Charleston Harbour, capturing any ships that tried to enter or leave the harbour. <laughs> Please tell me that this is the story of how the Charleston dance was created. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Trying to get everyone's attention. You know, just a bit of this, but just imagine done by a professional. <laughs> on a boat. Yeah. We can only assume. Yeah, I mean, does it say anything in this book? Uh, no. Okay. Where did you find that old dusty book? It's on the shelf. This feels like a pretty obvious. Yeah. Where I'll do you bet. think I found it? I well, at a cafe. <laughs> you fucking idiot. Should you at least found it on a bookcase? It's where books live. Right up there on the on the old shelf. Don't look too close. <laughs> should you not be quoting the author then? No. So in April. <laughs> out of copyright. <laughs> yeah. Thank God. So they set up around the harbour and he was taking, um, so every time they, they would sort of capture a ship, he would take the passengers hostage. Uh, he would take them prisoner. And the people in Charleston were terrified because they'd heard of Blackbeard's reputation and they were scared that he was so close and he was taking their people prisoner. So he sent messengers to the town demanding a ransom for his prisoners. His ransom? A well-stocked medicine chest. Oh. He's like, give me some medicine. And I'll leave. Got a bit of a sore throat. Yeah, have any you guys got any go lozenges? I'll get some lozenges or so maybe the, a little <laughs> yeah, yeah. for my tummy. Can I have some gauze? <laughs> His crew were like, mate, can you ask for the medicine and money? Because <laughs> like, I'm, be I'm not sick, but I need money. <laughs> it says, like, doesn't that just telegraph to the to the town? Hey, by the way, we're not doing so well. <laughs> yeah. If you were going to try and take us, now's probably yeah, the yeah. time. Half the, sh the crew are bedridden. <laughs> <laughs> We've all got the flu. So, but the people of Charleston were like, oh, yeah, okay, sure. So they send them a, uh, a medicine chest and Blackbeard left after about a week. That was it. He, seems he didn't like hurt a, anybody. Seems like a weirdo. But you started that story by saying he took advantage of his fearsome reputation. Yeah, because they were scared of him. He wasn't a particularly scary person. He could have asked for whatever he wanted. But he just needed medicine. I like it. Love it. I love it. I'm Back then, this though, more and more. like a, a well-stocked medicine chest, though, was like, oh, man, that was like, wow. Oh, you some know? of the best leeches in town. <laughs> yeah, yeah, only the best. <laughs> I was truly racing for pigs. <laughs> so after a busy year, Blackbeard decided to take a little break from piracy. And on uh, the 13th of June, he grounded um, the ship, the Revenge, and one of his smaller ships off the coast of North Carolina. He left the Revenge there and transferred all the loot to a fourth and last ship of his fleet, um, marooning most of his men on an island that was visible from the mainland. So he took <laughs> off <laughs> with yeah, some right. of his stuff. Do you leave them some leeches? <laughs> they had, like, they were fine. Castide Bonnet ended up rescuing the marooned men and set off in search of Blackbeard but never found him. Right. So he'd, like, Steed had sort of left and then he was coming back and he came back and found all the men on an island. He was like, okay, well, I'll pick you up. And then they're like, let's go get him. And they never found him. Doesn't seem like he was that hard to find, but they were bad pirates. <laughs> yeah, Steed sucked. Steed's really bad. Did you, you said North Carolina. Yeah. yeah. That actually, I know this is a little off topic, but that reminds me of this great fact I heard about recently. Um, do you know Michael Jordan, the basketball? Oh, yeah. So he uh, grew up in North Carolina and he played for their college team. Wow. And he was very good for them, right? And he wore, like, their light blue uniform, obviously. And then when he got picked up by the Chicago Bulls... Mm. Oh, wow. He still wore those blue shorts uh, while he played for the Bulls with his red <laughs> Chicago Bulls shorts over the top. But because he was playing... With two pairs of shorts, the second pair had to be bigger, which started a fashion in basketball of basketballs wearing bigger, baggier shorts. That's fascinating. All started in North Carolina. All because of his superstition. Yeah. Wow. Isn't that, that fascinating? I've never heard that before. No. And it's a good fact. Thank you. Did Blackbeard wear baggy shorts? We can only assume <laughs> yes. Um, a while later, Blackbeard was one of many pirates who was granted a king's pardon by Charles Eden, the governor of North Carolina. Um, so that's basically where pirates were like, like, away you go. Like, they're, they're, all their crimes and stuff were pardoned. Right, because often, I think if you got caught for that kind of piracy, they would hang you, right? Yeah. So I don't know. So no, I don't know how you qualify for a king's pardon, but he was given one. So they're, they're so terrified of you that they hope that. Hey, yeah. 
Maybe you retire now. Or, mm. or you just quietly have bribed them. Or the off. other way round, because uh, Charles Eden, the governor, was a bit of a crook. And he secretly had made a deal with Blackbeard, and they realised that working together they could steal far more than they could alone. <laughs> <laughs> so Blackbeard and his, and his men lived in a nearby inlet um, on Ocracoke, Ocracoke Island. Ah. Uh, Ocracoke. Ocracoke. Fair Ocracoke. <laughs> How I miss thou golden shores. Mm. Ocracoke. <laughs> Yeah. Picture you now. Beautiful, isn't it? The sun setting. Those golden shores. Mm. The water glistening. Oh, stop it. Take me back, okra coke. <laughs> you saucy, saucy bitch. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to use those words. <laughs> I you're didn't. right. You are a saucy bitch. So they just sort of settled at this little inlet and they would occasionally sail. Um, uh, back and forth, attacking passing ships. It was a very cruisy lifestyle for a while. Doing the Charleston. If anyone crosses this line, if you get in our way, it's not our fault. Yeah. Oh, got you. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just going to shoot this cannon at this line. If you if you sail into the cannon line, that's not on me. How's actually, that my fault? If I actually steal your treasure and sell it at a market for a lot of money, that's that's, that's on not you. on me. That is on you. That's on you. I'm just doing. I'm just. Going I'm just about my grabbing day. whatever's here. If your <laughs> ship sails in into my reach, and I happen to pull off what I imagine is like a, a sort of a, a little cabinet chest. chest. Mm. <laughs> I was wondering who you're pulling off then. Well, what kind of chest? Let's find out. <laughs> Doesn't matter. It was a different time back then. People did some pretty questionable things, mm. like stealing others' treasure. <laughs> Why are they getting around with these big cabins of treasure? That's exactly what they did because he, he, he and his shipmates provided the town with cash, black market goods, and manpower. I don't oh. know, they were like bouncers? No, no, that was a strip show. Ah, oh, <laughs> that makes more sense. <laughs> that does make more sense. Presenting manpower. I'll swab your poop deck <laughs> in the nude. <laughs> There was a guy called Charles Vane who was the leader of the pirates who declined a king's pardon. So they were like, they oh. were the real bad boys. So thanks for but no life. thanks. Yeah, it's like, I want your pardon. Uh, pirate life for me. So on... No, I mean, accepting the pardon, you can still accept it and then continue to do bad crimes, right? It's not stopping you from... Yeah, it feels like you take the pardon, fresh yeah. start. Yeah, fresh start. And then if you want to keep doing crimes, you just do them. I guess so. But Can't no, I, but like, you know, that that's compromising your ethics. Yeah, I suppose you seem more like a badass if you're like, no. Nah. Don't want it. Keep Every it. man has his price. Mm. True. But yeah, maybe it's like, you know, when John Lennon sent back the, the knighthood, if that's the thing that happened. <laughs> it's just like that. <laughs> I think you can draw a very, very close parallel between those two events. So Charles Vane. He visited Blackbeard and tried to get him to come and join him to reclaim the Caribbean as a lawless pirate kingdom. He was like, come back to the dark side. Oh, that, that, they always have one of those people in films. If you join me, we'll rule the galaxy forever. I'm talking about Star Wars. That's the only film I'm talking about. <laughs> but Blackbeard was like, hey, man, I got a good thing going here. So thanks, but no thanks. I'm paraphrasing. Or he may have said exactly that. I don't know. He could have been the one who coined thanks, no thanks. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, not sorry. Has Blackbeard. Did he also call that? Wow. Yeah. What a guy. So many of our current uh, vernacular is actually because of Blackbeard. Sorry, I'm thinking Shakespeare. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> it's, uh, Blackbeard was actually the first one to say, drain the main vein, as when uh, his mate Charles Vane was having a piss off the side of the boat. Wow. That's true. That, yeah. that phrase that we all use every single day, even now. Yeah. Can we wrap this up? I've got to go drain the main vein. <laughs> <laughs> but Dave... All good things must come to an end. Oh, what's going to happen now? Mm. Something you always say. Local merchants were fed up with Blackbeard and his crew operating in the area, and they complained to a different governor, Alexander Spotswood. Spotswood was like, ugh, Governor Eden's a bit of a dick. Let's get rid of Blackbeard. <laughs> Let's get rid of both of them. Spotswood sounds like a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> He's a bit of a narc. So he hired a bunch of men from the English warships that were docked and put them under the command of Lieutenant Robert Maynard. And in November of 1718, Maynard and his men went looking for Blackbeard. Not to, like, have a chat to him either. They're going to, like... Have a chat to him. Bang, bang. You know? that, what are they going to do? They're going to they're gonna have a real hard word. Oh. Yeah. So like you, you stop fucking our ship. <laughs> okay. 
Seriously, it's or else. weird. Or else, or our ships will fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, get the ship up nice and close. <laughs> We've got new technology. <laughs> Uh, I put a dick on the side of my ship. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna fuck you with it. We've got one extra mainsail now, and that's going up your bait. <laughs> <laughs> so they go looking for him, and they found him. Oh, uh, these people actually were able to. Find yeah, they him. found him oh. exactly where he'd been sta- living for a while. <laughs> this is Blackbeard Island. Yeah, <laughs> damn, the last place you look. <laughs> and his house has a little letterbox out the front that said Blackbeard. <laughs> it's got, it's got a, a and they're like, oh, letterbox has got a beard. I oh, reckon this is him. So many of Blackbeard's crew were ashore. Um, so when the two two uh, English ships approached, Blackbeard opened fire, killing several of the British uh, mariners and forcing one of the two ships, the Ranger, to bail on the battle. So now it's one on one. The other ship, the Jane. Ugh, come on. The Jane. The that's Jane. Weird. You could be anything. Be more menacing. The Jane. So it's St Anne's Revenge versus Jane. Jane. Ugh, one oh, on one. Evil Jane. Let's just call it that. Yeah. Yeah, call it uh, bleeding from her eyes, Jane. Yeah. You know? Oh, Jane's going to kill ya. Jane's got a, a butts on fire. Yeah, butt on the fire, boat. Jane. Yeah, <laughs> now, I'm, now I'm worried. Well, that just sounds like diarrhea. Let's just call it. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, you're not. Oh, yeah, actually, that's pretty that? scary. You want high seas? You want a Jane? That sweeps through the whole boat very quickly. <laughs> Jane the drain vein. Jane the drain vein. <laughs> You did. Well done. Um, so the other ship, the Jane, uh, closed in, looking looking basically empty to Blackbeard and his crew, who figured they were in for an easy fight. They're like, easy, we outnumber them. Man on man, it's one on one, easy. full court press. Easy peasy. No worries. But then Maynard's men suddenly emerged from below the deck, shouting and firing their pistols. Oh. In the air. <laughs> <laughs> like, shoot at them. And they went up in the air yeah. and came back down. <laughs> That's gravity. They hadn't discovered gravity yet. <laughs> so the battle was on. The two crews, uh, Maynard shot Blackbeard twice, but he kept fighting. Maynard later reported that Blackbeard had been shot no fewer than five times and had received at least 20 serious sword cuts. Mm. And is he still refusing to fight at this point? He's still like, no, no we can talk about it. They're, they're full on fighting at this point. Yeah, he was actually played by 50 Cent. So that makes sense. <laughs> trying, trying to get rich or die trying. That's right. That is true as well. Yeah. That actually links up better than I yeah. first didn't realize. <laughs> but in the final moments, just as Blackbeard was about to kill Maynard, even though he'd already been shot five times and cut at least 20, another soldier rushed in and cut Blackbeard across the neck. <gasps> Did he cut the beard? Yeah, the beard was. <laughs> that's where he's, that's his source of power. <laughs> The beard was trimmed. It was a devastating moment. Oh, that's the worst. But with one more blow, Blackbeard's head was no longer attached to his body. To his beard. (laughs) Oh, look what you've done. Come on. It took ages to grow. That took forever. I've got little bits of fizzling stuff in there. Oh, no. Yeah, now I've got to have bloody little peach fluff for a few months. You guys are really focusing on the beard. A man's just been decapitated. Decapitated. Yeah. So his beard is still attached to his face. Oh, thank God. But the face is just on the ground. Oh. Yes. That is an ideal scenario. He's obsessing with the beard. It's so weird. Well, Dave's a bearded man. Thank you. Zoom in on that. Come on. I need this. Don't do it. All right, do it. He relates. You he get it. Exactly. He's you, more so of a bearded man on. than he is a headed man. You'd be okay with your head being cut off as long as your beard was intact. Yes, if you take my beard off, I'm no longer whole. Yeah. Take my beard, take my life, Dave always <laughs> says. I'm fine. I'd shave it tomorrow if like, <laughs> someone gave me some money. Yeah, no one even, no one oh, think, well, I don't know why anyone would, but if someone gave me money, I would shave off my beard. Because no one thinks of you as a bearded man. Know what I mean? Well, I'm not a bearded man. I'm a man with a beard, yeah. but you are inherently... Yes, thank you. It's intrinsic. Beard and man... Where does the beard finish and where does the man start? Okay, so Blackbeard's been beheaded. Um, but he's still bearded. Oh, my God. It's all he's got. <sighs> yes. Yep. Jealousy is not a beautiful colour on you. <laughs> not a beautiful colour. <laughs> <laughs> I felt awful to say. <laughs> Jealousy's not a beautiful colour on you. <laughs> what are beautiful colours on me, Matt? List um, them. <laughs> blue and white stripes. Uh-huh. Um, just brown hair. <laughs> Just face, skin yeah, colour. Yeah, actually, I've copyrighted this hair colour. <laughs> yeah. It's got just brown. You'll never see it on anybody else <laughs> except my brother. That's just genetics. I can't get him to change. Yeah, I've you've tried. tried. You've tried to sue him. I shaved his head. All right. I chopped his head off. I chopped his head off. Uh, that'll teach him. So, Blackbeard, did he recover from this injury? He did not. Oh, dear. He did not. 
So with their leader dead, the rest of Blackbeard's crew were pretty quick to surrender. So like, mm, I don't want to. Um, so Blackbeard's body was thrown into the ocean and Maynard returned victorious to Virginia with Blackbeard's head proudly displayed on the front of the ship. Because oh, he, he also would want the beard. That's where the dick was. Yeah. yeah. He'd also want the beard attached because otherwise people, he'd be like, look, I've killed him. They'd be like, who's That's that? That's just a dude. That's just a dude without a beard. You're just bragging you killed a dude, you psycho. <laughs> you psycho. Oh, you killed Blackbeard. Cool. <laughs> they're gluing fake beard onto <laughs> a head. Now, sure, Maynard was hailed as a hero and, was, and would forever be known as the man who had killed Blackbeard, even if he didn't do it himself. But the legend of Blackbeard only grew more after his death. Unlike the beard, that stopped growing because he was dead. I, I think uh, hair grows a little bit after you die. Is that not true? Maybe it is. I maybe. don't know. I'm just trying to fucking wrap this up. <laughs> the, Sick the, of the, your fucking beard chat. There was a bank of the unicorns. Oh, for fuck's they had, sake. They had one album that was called, Who's Gonna Cut Our Hair Once We're Gone? <laughs> 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 Which nice. is good fun. That's a bit cute. Um, <laughs> men who had sailed with him automatically found positions of honour and authority on any other pirate vessel they joined. It was like so good for your resume. Oh, wow. I like yeah. went at McDonald's when you're young. <laughs> yeah. So they would like wander up to any other pirate and be like, yeah, I worked at Blackbeard. And they're like, I'm a captain, <laughs> my lord. It's like, well, I only worked the drive through but okay, I'll, <laughs> I'll be a captain. Blackbeard's legend grew with every retelling of his story. According to some stories, his headless body swam around Maynard's ship several times after it was thrown into the water, following the last battle. Like that, a headless chook. That is super weird, but imagine if it was just the head was swimming around afterwards. So, Floating, I think is what it's called. But if it was like I think, that, I think it would float. No, it was actually... Swimming. <laughs> like, wow. That's why it's it funny. It is. It is just starting to <laughs> like little runners. freestyle. Yuck. He had big ears. That's what they don't tell you about black beard. <laughs> big ears. That's why he grew such a long beard. Yeah. To distract from his big ears. And he combed it up and around his head to cover his ears. Cut in a bun uh, at the top. Don't look into it. Black weird, I'm telling you. Blackbeard is still, some 300 years later, the quintessential pirate. There were people who were better pirates than he was, taking more ships and looting more treasure, but none had his personality oh, and yeah. image, and many of them are all but forgotten today, but not our boy Blackbeard. And a fun fact, the wreck of the Queen Anne's Revenge was discovered in 1996, and many of the relics found there are on display at the North Carolina Maritime Museum. And despite little solid evidence, legends persist of Blackbeard's buried treasure and people still search for it. I love it. Love so that. So this is basically my way of asking you guys if we can please go on a treasure hunt. Yes. Yeah. Can we buy a metal detector? <laughs> Don't we already have like three of them? Yeah, sorry, can we get another metal detector? <laughs> yes, we should get three more so that we can all go oh, one in each jewel. hand. Jewel yeah. metal detector. Spread out around the park. Find some treasure. Yeah, that'd be really good. I had a taxi driver recently who, that's what he does, and he has a YouTube channel, he says. <laughs> we yeah. should find him. Oh, wow. <laughs> anyway. I think, yeah, it's definitely the calling card of a, of a, of a guy who's got everything together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll soon be our calling card. We list him as our uh, main inspiration for this I, web series. I actually think we're going to put him on our flag. <laughs> yeah, with because little drops of blood. Yep. Driving a uh, taxi with two <laughs> metal detectors out the window. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. That's badass. The dream. Can we actually get a flag? Yes, absolutely. Made? Can, Thank yes. you so much. That's it for Blackbeard the Pirate. And this web series is a spin off of our podcast, Do Go On, with over 200 episodes to listen to. If you liked this topic, check out some of our other high sea adventure episodes like Mutiny on the Bounty, Shackleton's Endurance, The Halifax Explosion, and The Principality of Sealand. Subscribe for free on your favourite podcast app and be sure to subscribe to this channel to check out our other videos. Yeah, that was so good. Thanks so much. You read those words one after the other in yeah, a way. Yeah, I didn't read them. Oh. So you thought those words you one after another. You said those words one after another. Yeah. Would have been weird if you said them not one after the other. Yeah, I said them all jumbled. Oh, Evan's very good at editing. <laughs> <laughs> that was seamless, Evan. God, he's good. Well he's done. so good. How does he do it? Evan.